so we just got our AFR um, 165 heads in for um, the 302 I'm doing. I went with the 165s because I'm really going to just, I'm not going to be doing too terrible, you know, much hot rotting up in the really high RPMs. Um, I'll probably shift around 5500, so these should really do the job. Um, anyway, so I want to do a quick unboxing video so we could take a quick look at these and just see how they come in. I've already uh, um, kind of popped it off here. So, let's kind of get everything situated. Kind of take a look at how they come packaged. Alright, these should be pretty light because they're aluminum. Should be able to yank it out here with one arm. If I can get a good grip around some of the plastic. They're pretty light, so this is kind of what they look like, I guess. Get the plastic all off here. All right, here's kind of a quick look. See that they're CNC machined, like uh, like they used the ball mill to go through and do all that work through there. They're faced off real good. I don't see any nicks and dings in them, so that's a plus. Again, we got a nice milled machine surface. And if we take a look in our ports here, you can see again that somehow they went through with a, a ball mill or something. I'm not even entirely sure how they did that going around the angle, but all CNC ported and trued up. That's pretty nice. Um, I do believe that we're supposed to have some guide plates and studs, and I believe those are in the packaging. We'll look at those in a moment, but here's our valve springs that are supposed to handle a cam with about 600 um, thousandths lift. So they look good. They got the good Viton seals in there, or whatever they are. So, and again, with Looking in here at the valves, they got the uh, the valve with the, oh, can't really see it in the dark there, can we? Oh, I'm having a hard time focusing, but you can see how it kind of has a step in it. So it's got the real thin stemmed valve for better flowing. So that's pretty good. Overall, they look pretty good. Valve retainers and everything are all as they should be. A lot of really good and solid machine work. No nicks and dings. They look good. Some of the casting. So. I see some stuff here where I'm going to want to go in and maybe deburr around these edges where the ball mill must have went through um, and they tapped it for the spark plug so you can see a little bit of a piece hanging there and of course I'm gonna disassemble these before I go ahead and run them make sure everything's good I don't have any messed up valves um, but Visual appearance, they look pretty good. You can see the hardened valve seats in there and then big thick exhaust valve. So it should be pretty good. Um, porting here looks good for the water jackets. Um, looks good. So we'll make sure that we got our other equipment, like our guide plates and our studs, and we should be perfect. All right, here is the... Uh, adjustable guide plates which are really nice and the uh, 3 8 rocker arm studs 
Um, there's 16 of these, obviously, and 16 of these, and they're labeled left and uh, right, so that's pretty good. You can see how, you know, they have some wiggle room for adjustment, so that's just perfect. Um, so that's pretty good. They, they come with the heads. Um, you can see here that the holes for the studs are lined just about perfect right up with the valve stem, so that's pretty good and solid. Um, just one last little look over here at all the machining. You can see they got the services machined flat where the head bolts go. Um, I need to look up there. Head bolt torquing procedures, I'm sure it could be slightly different than what you do with iron heads given the fact that they're aluminum, but one more look here. All the port work and the thinner valve stems. Actually, that's the intake. It might not have a thinner valve stem, not sure. Um, yeah, the exhaust side definitely does. Kind of a look at the combustion chambers again and all the work going through. Like I said, we noticed this little eyebrow that we're going to cut off so that doesn't fall into our engine. Um, all the cooling ports look good. So overall, you know, from what I've seen with aftermarket heads, these are very well machined, a lot of attention to detail and a lot of good work. And, you know, rightfully so when you go ahead and spend $1,500. Um, for these heads, and these heads in particular are the AFR 165s, as I have mentioned. Their part number is 1399, and that's the non emission head. You know, I'm pretty sure the emissions one might have some emissions equipment attachments plus the heat crossover. So, this head eliminates the heat crossover, which is fine because I'm running a air gap intake manifold and they don't have a heat crossover anyhow. So, anyway. Looks to be pretty solid, so that's kind of a quick look there at what you get when you buy some AFR heads and what they look like coming out of the box. So they were, um, you know, in good shape. Not all dinged up like some aftermarket heads. They're really good. So anyway, just kind of a little brief, brief overview, but you get the idea there what you're getting when you buy them. So there you have it, AFR heads unboxing.